Hey folks, I'm Gene Delisella, president of Audioholics. And I'm Marshall Guthrie, videographer extraordinaire for Audioholics. Marshall, how are you doing tonight, my friend? Doing great. I am ready to be the Vanna White in our little how-to video here. <laughs> I like that. You're not quite as uh, elegant or as pretty as her, but we'll take we'll Yeah, that. yeah, 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 yeah. You can, you can save that for the outtakes. Right. <laughs> Anyways, Marshall, you know, I can't believe how many questions I've been getting on our base management videos on YouTube about how to set their subwoofer, how to set the crossover on their subwoofer. And you know, we've covered this pretty much in, in many of those videos, but I think it's such an important topic that it needs a video of its own. So I'd like to do a video talking about that with you today. Yeah, there's just so many configurations too. So we actually went ahead and pulled the amplifier out of a great little $400 subwoofer. It's the RSL Speedwoofer 10S. And what's great about this subwoofer is it has every single connection possible for, for people to encounter when they're setting up their sub. So we're gonna, in one simple video, run through every single possible configuration of how to get a subwoofer up and, up and running, regardless of how complex your system is. Now, for the majority of people that are setting their subwoofer up, they're doing it in a home theater type environment where they're plugging it into an AV receiver or a preamp processor. So in those cases, which I would say is 99% of the time, mm -hmm. you're gonna be using a line level connection Yep, and on this, the back of this sub, they've actually denoted that, and it's called LFEN. That stands for Low Frequency Effects. And so if you see anything that says LFEN, that's the one you take a single RCA-style cable, something that has a little end that looks like that. You plug one end into the back of your subwoofer amp. You plug the other end into the back of your audio video receiver or whatever you're doing to do your processing. And, and you let the majority of the crossover work be done then in the AVR. And let's clarify one point. The connection you make on your AV receiver is either the LFE out or mm -hmm. subwoofer output. Yep. That's, that's where the base managed uh, low frequency signal comes out of the receiver and goes to your subwoofer. Yeah, on the back of your receiver, you might have preamp inputs. You don't want to go there. You want to go sub out, LFE out to the input on the back of your subwoofer. So, you know, I notice on that subamp you've got line inputs and and LFE inputs. We should we should talk about what the differences are between those two connections. Absolutely, and RSL makes it pretty simple. If you do use the LFE, they actually put a little switch that you flip it over to a bypass to use the LFE setting. And it kind of disables everything else. Um, but if you are using a, 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 a system that does not have a single subwoofer out or LFE out, then you want to find yourself a preamp or a line out and use that instead. Okay, now why you want to use the LFE input on your subwoofer connection in this case, it's very convenient that RSL offered this. What this does is it bypasses the internal crossover of your subwoofer. So if you're using base management on your AV receiver and you set all your speakers to small and you set your crossover to 80 hertz, that's the typical configuration you do in a 5.1 or a 7.1 uh, setup. You don't want to cascade two crossovers. You don't want to have the crossover from the receiver and the crossover from the subwoofer in parallel with each other because I'm sorry in series with each other because that's what causes a ripple right at the crossover frequency you get you know uneven frequency response it can make the bass very boomy so this is a very convenient way to bypass the subwoofer crossover yeah again just to keep it simple so the way a crossover works it says some frequencies are getting through other frequencies aren't so what the crossover does in this case is it sends the high frequencies to your main speakers, it sends the low frequencies to your subwoofer, and it makes sure that the speakers in the subwoofer are only getting the frequencies that they are most able to produce well. Correct. Now, there's three ways that we could bypass the crossover on your subwoofer. RSL already gave you the first way, which is using the LFE input. That's the best, easiest way for most people. If your amplifier doesn't have that feature, there might be a switch that says defeat crossover or just um, no crossover. And if that isn't the uh, possibility there, you'll have to turn the dial all the way to the max setting of the crossover setting, usually 150, 200 hertz, something like that. You don't want to set it for 80 hertz, or you don't want to set it within 20 hertz of the crossover setting on your receiver, otherwise you're doing that cascading, which causes that problem we were talking about. Right, again, so on the RSL, you just go ahead and crank it, in this case, fully clockwise to its highest setting, the highest number on there. And that ensures that when your AVR applies that crossover internally in the electronics of that box sitting at the front of your room, it does not get doubled up or it doesn't get interfered with at the subwoofer itself. Right, so, you know, we covered that. What about uh, people see 
the phase switch? Does your zero 180 degree or there's a variable phase where you could adjust it within a, you know, zero to 180 degrees in increments of 10, 10 degrees. There is a little bit of a difference between the delay setting of the receiver and the phase. The delay is a, is a basically a group delay. It delays every frequency equally by a certain mm -hmm. uh, milliseconds or feet or whatever the settings are. The actual phase switch on your uh, plate amp of your subwoofer will actually adjust the phase possibly at the crossover frequency. So it's a little bit different. So I would still recommend once you set the delays correctly and you get your AVR set up correctly, um, have a friend sit behind the subwoofer. You sit at the couch at your primary listening position, put two channel music on with a lot of bass and let them go zero degrees and then 180 degrees. And then you determine which way the bass sounds best. And in the case with the RSL, you've got a variable phase that goes zero to 180 in increments of 10. Most of the time you don't need that kind of um, adjustment. Usually just the switch, a flip of a switch is good enough. And also realize that it's really gonna be dominating in one, in one seating position. If you only have one sub, that setting is gonna be most effective in the sweet spot, not so much multiple seats. That's why you need multiple subs to even out the base um, for all your seats. But right. that's another topic we've covered as well. I was well. going to say, probably a more advanced topic when it comes to setting phase on dual subwoofers. So, you know, we got the phase thing. Usually you leave it at zero degrees. Try it at 180, see what sounds best. The other thing you'll get on these amplifiers on some of the more advanced subwoofers is EQ presets. And I'm not sure the RSL doesn't have that, correct? Uh, we don't have anything in terms of like a movie or music setting, although that is becoming more prevalent, especially in those subwoofers that have some sort of digital EQ built in. It, what I typically recommend in those cases is you set it for the flat setting and uh, see how your, your system performs. If you want to get advanced and do some measurements, you get an REW uh, measurement system with a mic. Measure at the listening position to see how that subwoofer is performing in the room. If you need to do any type of EQing at that point, it's usually best to do manual EQ, whether you do it in the receiver. Some of the new Yamaha Avantage receivers give you a PEQ all the way down to 15 hertz. So if you're able to measure the response and you, and you see a big bump, let's say at 25 hertz, mm -hmm. then you can go in and manually filter that out with the um, manual EQ of the Yamaha receiver or whatever receiver you have. That's usually a better method. However, if you want to play around with the presets and you want to try the movie mode or you want to try the music mode, try them and see how it sounds. It's a, it's a kind of thing you can experiment with. If you can't measure it, then you know trust your ear at that point or just yeah. your ears i should say what it, whatever sounds best is critical and usually when you talk about that flat setting if it only has a movie or music setting usually the music is a, a less adulterated uh, eq the movie settings tend to have a little bit of bump in the low end because they want those big explosions to really hit you in the chest right right so you know the next thing is some of these subwoofers and, and the rsl is not one of those because i think it just has a slotted port in the front and it's not something that you could plug Correct. but there are some subwoofers that have multi-port two or three ports mm -hmm. sometimes they ship them with port plugs mm -hmm. so there's different tuning options typically if you leave it with all three ports or all two ports whatever it is if you leave that open that's usually the max setting that's when you get the maximum output spl output but typically, if you plug one port, you'll get more low-end extension, but you'll lose a little output above the higher frequencies. And then there are options where you could set it for sealed. So in a case where if you have too much bass in the room, if you have a corner-loaded sub and it just sounds boomy to you, you might want to try sealing that sub. And what that does is that cuts down on some of the middle bass to lower bass frequencies, but it also gives you a slower or more gradual roll off instead of a 24 db per octave slope um, you'll get like a 12 db per octave slope so you might get a better integration in your room that's a that's another thing you can experiment with it's better if you can measure but also follow the manufacturer's guidelines about how they tell you to place the subwoofer and how they tell you to, to use the different port tuning uh, modes that they offer yeah, definitely a more advanced topic there. If, if, if that just went over everybody's head, if you're a beginner starting out, but you did spend money on the advanced subwoofers that have the variable port tunings, you probably want to pick the middle setting. Um, something that gives you uh, probably the highest output around 20, 25 hertz. You see a lot of subwoofers, they'll give you extension down to 15, 12 hertz. And there's a certain school of people, I'm not looking to alienate them, that believe that going as deep as humanly possible is where it's at. But for most casual listeners, what they're going to want is 
a, a response somewhere towards 20, 25 hertz at the maximum output so that you do get the, the, the most output at the frequencies that are going to have the most impact during the big blockbuster explosions. Yeah, there's always trade-offs. If you try to tune too low, you lose max output. So just keep that in mind, guys. Yeah. Um, is there any other settings on that plate amp that you wanted to go over that we didn't discuss? Well, we haven't talked about level, and that's a pretty critical one. Uh, again, if, oh, you, yeah. if you have an AVR that has an automatic, uh, uh, automatic setup, sometimes they call it room correction, but it's all part of the same thing, it'll, it'll hit a little signal out there, it'll measure the amplitude, the volume of that signal, and it'll adjust accordingly in the AVR. But there's usually only a certain range that the AVR can either pump it up or push it down. And so most of the time we recommend that people start with the volume knob or the level knob on their subwoofer at the middle setting. Set it at the middle and then run that AVR. And what the AVR should do is at the end, it should give you a report saying what it set the level of your subwoofer at. If it's plus 10 or minus 10, that usually means 10 or plus 10 decibels or minus 10 decibels, that usually means it's at the high or low end of its range. And so what you want to do is you want to adjust accordingly, either turning up the volume on your sub or turning down the volume of your sub and then rerunning that until you're getting an adjustment in your AVR somewhere in the neighborhood of like five or seven decibels at most. If it's zero decibels, you've hit it straight on, you have the perfect setting on your subwoofer, don't touch it, leave it alone. Yeah, in fact, the newer iterations of Odyssey will have you go in and adjust the level of your sub before it does the setup to, to reach 75 dB according to their microphone. So it just gives you a better, uh, more accurate way of setting level. Mm -hmm. The other thing too is like you were saying, if you set your sub level too high on the subwoofer, then the receiver is going to bump it down to almost its minimal setting just to get the levels right. And what happens sometimes in that case is your subwoofer won't turn on at low volume. You know, mm -hmm. you just don't have enough sensitivity going to that amp. So as Marshall said, it's a good idea to get that gain up on that sub a little higher if you can. That way you're not doing a minus 15 dB or minus 10 dB on your subwoofer when every other channel's at plus 5 dB. Mm -hmm. Try to keep that, you know, narrow that down a little bit. And this one is an easy one to address for folks that don't have an AVR. Uh, what you want to do is you want to hop online, you want to go buy a sound level meter and basically uh, run a, a pink noise through your speakers and through your subwoofer and try to get it at about the same volume. Again, this is a very rough technique for people that are just starting out. If you're watching this video and you're saying, but Marshall, what about uh, the, the low frequency amplitude and is, isn't this frequency dependent, then you, you, you probably want to be looking at the more advanced videos that we have on Audioholics. If you don't want to go out and spend money on an SPL meter, there's nothing wrong with downloading an app for your phone. There's so many free SPL apps. Just keep in mind that the microphones built into your phones are the cheapest that they can get away with to do voice reproduction. Hmm. They're not meant for accurate measurement. It's better than nothing, but it's not the thing that you want to be counting on if you're trying to squeeze every last bit of performance out of your system. Right. Um, yeah, and there, there are some subwoofer companies now that have apps with their subs as well. So they, and they they calibrate for the mic. They cal they compensate for the mic issues. So check out some of the newer subs with these little apps. I think Elac is one of them, and I don't know if SVS is another one that's that's doing that now. Yeah, Elac slick feature. Elac guys. has a great setup routine. In fact, I've got an Elac sub down by my foot here, just out of the camera shot. If if you are just starting out and you want a lot of the whiz bang features, but you don't have a full featured AVR, a good way to get most of the way there is by looking at a subwoofer that has a lot of these auto setup routines built into it, like the Elax. Well, that's cool. You know, the other thing, the other thing I, I wanted to tell uh, our, our readers here and our viewers is before you even get into hooking up your sub, watch our video on subwoofer crawl that I think, Marshall, you did that video, right? Yeah, I think I did. There's, there's, a, there's a good shot of my rear end as I'm crawling around the room for people <laughs> that are into that. That's a, that's, a really good, that's a really good video to watch to help you figure out the best place to put that subwoofer so you get the best performance. Right. Um, I don't know how deep you want to go also for folks that might be setting this up without an AVR, um, but I will say that the RSL has speaker level inputs. And so these are designed mm -hmm. for people who are using an amplifier that only has two audio outputs. They're full power, and it's going to be one for your left speaker, one for your right speaker. If you don't have anything that looks like the small round RCA port on there, then you want to be looking for a subwoofer that has speaker level with these binding posts where you put the actual wire from the speaker and pass it through the subwoofer before going to your speakers. Or you could do it in a parallel connection. If you're running your speakers on large, then you'll run two extra pairs of speaker cable uh, from your receiver or your amplifier or whatever into that subwoofer. You want to do that in parallel, not in series. Otherwise, you're going to cut, you know, have performance issues if you do that. 
And the last thing that I'll mention on here is I know that we have the dual subwoofer video out there, but for folks that just want to do a quick experimentation, the RSL is great because it does have line outputs, and so you could actually chain the output from your AVR to one subwoofer and then go from one subwoofer's outputs to the other subwoofer's inputs. The alternative is you can get a Y cable. This is a super cheap one. I might recommend that you spend a little bit more money than probably the 60 cents this one cost. Um, but what it does is it goes from a single output on your AVR and then it, it splits that into two directions. And in that case, you can run one to one sub and one to the other sub and you're not chaining them in series. Um, I don't have a strong opinion, Gene, on which one of those techniques is better. It, I suppose the Y is gonna, the, the Y crossover where you're sending each one a signal cable is gonna give you less possibility of the signal getting manipulated through the electronics of the subwoofer. Well, in, in actuality, if you're gonna hook up more than two subs, you're better off daisy chaining because if you're gonna just use one output, you don't wanna, you don't wanna put mul more than two subs on one output because it's not buffered. Yep. So when you run it from one sub to the next, each time you go from line in to line out, you're getting a new buffering stage and you could just run as many as you want and you won't have any degradation at all. That's usually the better way to do it if you can. You know, yep. that's that's good that RSL offered that all these connections at such a uh, low price. That's pretty awesome. Yep, yep. So if you if you're going with if you're going with more than two, definitely do the uh, the daisy chain or putting them all in series there. Boy, I've right. you know I've run out of connections on the back of this <laughs> RSL. I don't think we're going to touch wireless really in this video because it's not applicable to every subwoofer. But if you are looking for a wireless solution, the RSL does have wireless built in. No extra dongles there. Well, we forgot the most important connection. Of the power connection. Do you know what that is? Right? Yeah. Is it the power It's not going connection? to work if you don't plug it in. <laughs> Good point. My hand was actually covering it up. So because the RSL really focuses on giving you some of these more advanced level features, they have a detachable power cable. Uh, yours might be plugged in, which makes it harder to forget. But with the RSL, because it's detachable, you might get a lot of connections up there, a lot of wires run into it, and you're saying, why isn't this thing lighting up? I must have a defective unit. Make sure you plug that sucker into the wall. Well, guys, I think we wrapped up this topic pretty well. I don't really foresee anything else to discuss about it. But you know what? If you have any questions that we didn't cover, put them down below. Give us some comments. Tell us what we left out or what you want to discuss about subwoofer connections. Or tell us what you want to discuss about connecting any piece of AV equipment. We want to be shooting more videos like this for you guys. And we want to be helping you guys get your basic setup going. That way you uh, enjoy what you're purchasing. Um, Please share the wealth with us. Share it on Facebook. Share it on your Instagram. Share it any way you want. And uh, until next time, guys, keep, keep listening. listening.